What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's your boy Ty, man. And today, yep, like the video said, Forex is boring! Hey, so they're like, yo, Ty, what do you mean? We love Forex. You love Forex. Look, at the end of the day, I do, but I figured out the game. I figured out the art of basically trading less because trading less is more. Now, the more that you're in the game, I know something about you, the more you're gonna lose money. And it's this thing, 90% of traders are not successful, but it's true, think about it. If everybody fucking was, could make money in the stock market, if everybody could make money in the foreign exchange, like literally, who would go to work? So once we have this real perspective, let's, let's get real here, let's keep it raw, let's keep it raw. So once we have this real perspective here about the foreign exchange industry and that not many people will become successful, a lot of people are interested in the business and that's the difference. It's the difference between being interested, being genuinely inter interested, uh, playing a little bit in the game and then becoming a professional player in the game okay so at the end of the day the higher you go in the foreign exchange industry the more boring it gets like the thing is like the market moves up and down and a lot of people you guys are excited when you make your first thousand make your first 500 and that's all cool but what about the players who've been in the game almost 10 20 years do you think it's still the same excitement no you for us it's like waking up and going to work in the morning and who the fuck wants to go to work in the morning? No, but seriously though, seriously, like who literally wants to wake up and go to work, to work in the morning? So I've created in a sense a system that helps me not be able to do that. And that's when I'm looking at higher time frames. That's when I'm looking at, you know, things like that because it just helped me become distracted about not even thinking about the foreign, ex the, uh, foreign exchange industry. When you're young in the game, when you're new in the game, we call those like newborns, you know what I'm saying? Basically, what a newborn foreign exchange trader is, is this, you just found out about Forex, you're excited, you probably went to one of them hotel meetings, they got you pumped up. Uh, they've said everybody in the meeting is making well over six figures, seven figures, nine figures, 10 figures, literally, everybody's a 30 figure earner all trillionaires and billionaires and forex is the wave and you can make it so once you take your first trade you understand that this isn't true and this shit is actually hard right but see it's not about it just being hard it's about this thing being so simple that your brain will try to complicate this for you. And I've simplified it down to literally A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You're like, what do you mean, Ty? Like, I've literally, because for me, like I said, like, see, simplicity usually always wins. And what that means is like, look at companies like Apple. They don't have a crazy logo. Look at companies like Facebook. They don't have these crazy, crazy outlandish logos. It's just a simple, boom, Apple. So it was a simplistic idea that was able to win because people could translate that much simpler, much easier than all the jargon, all the multiple colors, all type of craziness, right? Not to say some brands don't use multiple colors, but when you're just thinking logos and stuff like that, you wanna get things to the simplest, most recognizable aspect of that brand or business, and that's how you are able to move forward. They're like, damn, what does bro know about marketing and branding and business? That's, let's talk about Forex. I know y'all Y'all try to, a lot of people try to put me in a box. They're like, oh man, he's only a foreign exchange trader. But then you look at the day in the lights and you see me on movie sets, you see me on multiple sets handling every camera from the smallest Canon, uh, what is that, Canon 80D to red cams, red dragons, all type of stuff. So my history goes back much further than some boring foreign exchange market. You guys really have to look up Tyler K. Moore and then look up, Ty oh, I'm not wearing Tyler in their hat, but look up Tyler in there, the brand, like Google that, the brand, and then do your research. So that's what I do when I'm, when I'm looking into these other foreign exchange companies or you know people who are selling these forex courses and stuff like that. And what's cool is like a lot of these people, they won't tell you, but how they make their money is selling to people who literally don't know. People who think, oh man, I'm gonna be rich if I learn this forex shit, oh man, I'm gonna, and like I said, all of that sounds good, but it's to excite you to sell you at the end of the day. This industry is boring. This industry is vicious and it's designed to take your money. Now, a lot of you guys, like I said, you get in the game and you don't think that it's designed that way. You don't think that, you know, foreign exchange is, is anything cruel. You're like, oh man, we're all gonna get in and win. You have this, we're gonna get in and win mentality. And if you break it down to its bare bones simplicity, you will, you will. The market literally moves in three ways, up, down, and sideways. No, it doesn't move any other ways than that. So now that we got the three ways that is broken down, you feel me? Then you really dissect the uptrend. It goes up and then comes down for a retrace. And then it goes up and it comes down for a retrace. That's your uptrend, you feel me? So it's like your downtrend is it goes down and then it pops back up for a retrace. Or basically all that, all that means is something is either being overbought 
are oversold. You know what I'm saying? So that's why the market is pushing back down. Once it hits its highest point, people are selling their positions because they're closing positions at the high. You know what I'm saying? You really buy low, sell high. That, that's, the, that's the stock game. But shit, that's, that's natural business. Buy low, sell high. So once the price gets to the highest point, what do you do? Sell, 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 sell. But if a lot of people are selling at this high price, what does that price start doing? Backing off a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I'm, I could give you guys the game, but it's literally as simple as that. Like, and if you haven't figured out a way to simplify forex, that's literally why you cannot win because you haven't figured out a way to simplify the foreign exchange market. Now, a lot of people, man, you guys ask how, how sharks operate. Bro, we just fucking operate. You feel me? We're not afraid. We're not scared to eat. I'm not scared to eat shit around here. You feel me? And um, shit, that's just what it is. So you guys can't be afraid to make big moves. You can't be afraid to make moves, period. And a lot of you are afraid to take that next step. A lot of you are afraid to just make those moves that are going to get your mind right, get your life right, get you to actually be in something worthwhile. But like I said, man, in business, you guys are scared. So a lot of people aren't successful in Forex because they won't take the shot. You know what I'm saying? I gotta keep adjusting the, uh, the camera because the lighting, how it's working and stuff, but they won't take the shot. You guys are afraid to take the shot. So for me, I wake up, man, Forex is like autonomous for me. What that means is automatic, it's robotic. Um, I wake up, pop my trades in, go on with my day. Once I adjust my trades and stuff, adjust my stops, I'm not looking at this shit. But that's the thing, Forex is boring. Bro, why are you still looking at the market? Why are you still trying to manage your money? The, the goal is for your money to work for you. So if you're still in the market hunting for trades, hunting for this, hunting for that, you're not letting your money work for you. You're not literally letting your money do what it's supposed to do. If you have one hundred dollar bill, let that hundred dollar bill work for you. And that's what you guys haven't understood. You know what I'm saying? So people are like, give us more forex, give us more forex. Forex to me is boring. It's the most boring subject in the world. Um, like I said, I got a love and hate relationship with the foreign exchange market. I love it because you can eat off of it, but I hate it because it's trash, bro. It's so, what? Graphs, bro, graphs, graphs up and down graphs all day, graphs, analytics, numbers, graphs, analytics, and numbers, percentages, uh, ratios, that's foreign exchange, but let's keep it raw though, let's keep it raw, let's keep it real. A lot of people aren't gonna tell you that, they're gonna tell you you can get fucking rich off this, they're gonna try to sell you some nonsense, they're gonna tell you, hey, even you can become successful. I'm telling you, hey, even you may not, you may not, you may not, and that's the bare, real reality of this whole entire industry. Like I said, man, a lot of people get on YouTube, you guys are fucking chasing views, everybody's quick to post, oh, I made $200 today, bro, who gives a fuck? So what, it's $200, oh, I made three grand today, bro, that's three grand. Like, literally, in, in big boy world, you know, when you put on your big boy pants, you know what I'm saying, and in the world of people who are making money, like, bro, like, three grand, like, bro, we're not even, bro, you're shitting three grand, you're like, okay. <laughs> But, but seriously though, so you gotta look at it from my perspective, man, somebody who's been doing this shit almost 10 years, um, like I said, look up the title in her name and brand and just look around and see like, oh shit, bro's really been out here on these sets, dealing with these cameras, dealing with these different type of personalities, celebrities, I've worked with so many different people up until this point, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people are saying, oh, you made it off Forex. I've used Forex to get back my freedom. That's the only thing. Like. Before, before this, what, five or six years ago, I was working at Home Depot, Target, and fucking Kroger in a deli. Bro, when I was at Kroger, but after, after that, I was working at Macy's too, because I quit all those jobs and I needed some more income, so I worked at Macy's too. And then after Macy's, that was it. That was when I was in A. I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm going full time with this Forex stuff, and I never look back. You feel me? But what I learned uh, working at Home Depot, when I was working at Home Depot, I think I was getting paid like $7.25 an hour. That was minimum wage in Atlanta at that time, or in Georgia that, uh, at that time. And uh, 725 an hour was nothing. No, no, 725 an hour was at Kroger. That's in the deli. So I was doing like 30, uh, 33 hours a week in the deli at 725 an hour after taxes. My check was trash. <laughs> it was so trash. I'm not even gonna flex with you. It was so, it was so trash. It was so trash. I gotta keep adjusting this joint. It was so trash. And then. Um, when I was working at Target, I was working as a, uh, what are those people who do the stock stuff, put the boxes and stuff up? The stock uh, stock boy, the dudes who, um, we came in at like four o'clock in the morning. Um, that's when the trucks offload, you cut the boxes up and you go stock all the stuff on the shelves and stuff. So that was my, my second th joint with that. I was working three jobs at one time. And then the third thing I was working was, um, was I said Kroger, Target, and Home Depot, right? So yeah, Home Depot. So Home Depot, I was working in tools, um, tools and supply and stuff like that. So I was dealing with, you know, just hardware. I was in a hardware department then I used to always go back and work with paint and then work with um, the drywall and stuff like that I think that was um 
like some of the construction i don't remember what the compartments were called but i mean that's what i was doing you know what i'm saying previously but it's like bro i have all these skills i was already good at editing good at using the camera good at speaking public speaking good at entertainment good at doing shows i'm like bro i'm working through these jobs and literally like i don't i didn't feel like i was worthy I didn't feel like they were worthy to have somebody like me there. You feel me? So I'm like, yo, I have to get out of this and figure out how I can span. So like this Forex stuff just opened up my mind to possibilities of you don't have to be stuck in a box. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people like all you have is Forex and selling courses because you don't have anything else going for you. I got I can I could never make a Forex video today and still be tired, still be doing exactly what I've been doing today. Cause I mean, shit, go look at my history. That's what I'm telling you guys. Go do the same way I do research on uh, on your foreign exchange mentors is how you should be researching me. Oh, Tyler's talking all this big mess, but then bro, go look at bro history though. He's worked with everybody, shit. But you feel me though? So like I said, man, ultimately Forex is boring and it's been boring me for the past uh, almost what, seven years now that I've been doing this joint. You feel me? So I'm three years away from doing it for 10 years which is uh, crazy, man, it's crazy, almost 10 years in the game, that's, that's veteran status right there. So people are like, oh man, how are you able to help people make money online for free? Because I've been doing it for so long. What is the little secret you have in your head? I just watched that Understanding Japanese Candlestick video, a very boring video, and you guys in the comment section, let me know how boring that video really is, because if, if that video is not the most boring video in the world, but it, it was helpful, it was helpful. So Forex could be used as a tool, and, and that's what I think you guys need to start using it as, as like a tool or something, as a tool to get to that next level, as a tool to be able to increase whatever it is that you want to do. If you do, um, if you have a construction business, because I've worked at Home Depot, so let's say that. If you have a construction business and you're like, oh man, I want to expand it. Now you got different ways to get the funds to expand it. Let's say you have some expenses, you can use it on marketing, you can use it on all sorts of stuff. But let's say you're like, yeah, I'm gonna put you know, $1,000 over here and I wanna go ahead and try to you know, not flip my account, but scale my account over the next year. But see that mindset that I came in with, I'm trying to scale my account over the next year. A lot of you guys wanna flip it tomorrow, you wanna flip it in three months, you wanna flip it, you're a flipper, you're a account flipper. I know you're really blowing your shit though. But let's be honest, let's, can, we, can we be honest here? <laughs> I know you're blowing your account. You feel me? How do I know that you're blowing account? Because you're trying to flip that shit, which means obviously you're over leveraging, you're probably taking way too many positions. I mean, I can go on and on with, with that, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, man, it can be used as a tool to get you wherever you wanna be, uh, as a tool to unlock the life of your dreams. But you shouldn't be 100% reliant on the foreign exchange industry. Use this shit, what people use it for, and go build your business, go build your brand, go live your life. And that's what I'm gonna leave you with, man. Use Forex to build your life the way you wanna build it and go do exactly that. When you guys watch that three reasons I love trading Forex video, I told you, the first reason is because I like telling people no. Actually, it's my favorite shit. And it's only because, like, you gotta think, like, I'm coming from the entertainment business as well, so I used to knock on hella doors. And all the people used to tell me is no, 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 and no. So I was like, shit. I want to be one of those guys, you feel me? I want to be one of those guys who are in a position to tell others no because no is so powerful. You know what I'm saying? The power, the no is so powerful. It's like, holy shit, you tell somebody no, it's a wrap. It's like, oh man, like they'll lose their shit by you telling them no. You know what I'm saying? So for me, um, oh, you can come in, yeah, you can come in, you can come in. They can change the trash and shit in here. But for me, telling people no, that's really like my favorite thing in the world. I love to tell people no. The reason why, like I said, the reason why I like telling people no is because it's literally total freedom. You know what I'm saying? Like what thing about freedom is like you get a chance to do whatever you want to do so if, if i don't want to do something because i don't have to i can literally be like no i don't want to do it and then don't do it you feel me so that's why i trade because i like telling people no the other reason i like trading is because i like driving the best cars in the world and also i like living this awesome amazing lifestyle where i can get up i can go smoke my weed at the beach i can go have fun i literally can do whatever i want to do and that's the power of work so people see the lifestyle they're like well, you haven't showed us taking your trade because that's to me bro it's autonomous i can, I can do it on my phone boom pop in the trade and keep it moving you know what I'm saying? But your mind is so processed because so many people have been selling to you. You don't know the fucking difference between real or fake. But then if you're in the world or on this online thing, you probably don't know the difference between that either. You feel me? So like I said, I gave you guys my reasonings behind why I do what I do and why I love doing what I do the way I do what I do. You know what I'm saying? And why do you do what you do, how you do, why you do it? Just that's because that's how I do it. So right now, shit. I'm about to hop off this joint. We got this video thing cracking. See, I got the pool table right here. 
I'm about to go ahead and uh, get it cracking for myself, man. This is what I like doing. This is what I like doing. I know you guys are probably on the charts, lost on the charts or some shit, or whatever, whatever, whatever people who trade Forex do. But Tyler, this is what Tyler does right here. You feel me? See the pool tables? I mean the pool or the pool balls. This is what I like doing in the morning. I have fun. Sometimes me and my girl come down here and we be arguing and shit. We be like, yo, let's let's see who's gonna uh, let's see, go, see who's gonna win in pool. Because whoever's gonna win in pool, that's how we know who's gonna decide what to eat this morning. Like, what? See me on the pool table then. See me on the pool. See me. See me. You feel me? Now change a little autofocus joint. But yeah, so hey man, like hey, you gotta just keep grinding, keep grinding, keep getting it. Like I said, forex is boring, and if it's still fun for you, then you have work to do. The moment, the moment this shit gets boring is when I know you're gonna be the most profitable. The moment forex becomes boring is the moment I know you're gonna be the, mo the, the most profitable because you figured out the roboticness in the market. You figured out that the market does the same thing every every day, every week, every day, every day of the year that is moving or that is open. You know what I'm saying? The forex is literally, forex is literally one plus one equals two. They're like, nah, bro, it can't be that simple. One plus one equals two, and that's how I can describe the foreign exchange industry. But like I said, man, I'm about to have fun. You guys see, I got my, uh, well, I got to get these other balls over here. Got to set these up. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna set those up real quick. About to have some fun. It's probably like uh, eight or nine o'clock in the morning, something like that. Probably like ten o'clock in the morning. I don't have a job, I don't have to go to work, so I get to play pool and enjoy my life, man. So that's what I'm trying to get you guys to. Um, those other guys are trying to sell you programs, that trying to sell you all type of nonsense, but man, fuck that. <laughs> I'm about to play pool after this game. I'll be sharpening it up in here. After this game, I'm about to uh, roll out me some drill, some of that good California lifestyle, and uh, we're gonna get it cracking, but it's your boy, Ty, man. You know what it is, Tricky!